song. Yay! Yay! Okay, so it's a problem in my life. Good to know. I'm gonna get Instagram on the phone because this is not the first time. And I'm tell them to get it together. Time, so <laughs> tell them to get it together, and hopefully, like I said, your folks will find their way over here. Um, yeah, they're, they're yeah. coming. They're, where I, find I see. I think they're coming. They're slowly but <laughs> coming in. I'm I'm impressed, and I'm proud of you all. Thank you for coming. By the way, my last name is Haudegi Haudegi. Ha, sp say it for me one more time so I can get it right. So, the way it's it's for, I pronounce it to the I want it. I want to I want to give me so give it to me with all the say it. all the accent. Give it to me. How are you? 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 Yeah. I've been practicing. So it's it's confusing though. I get it because in Spanish when you have a G A next to each other, it's a right. Instead of adjusting. Got it. Got it. How do you? Well, Spanish hey. one -on -one. Little Spanish one on one. Look at me getting my multilingual on. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. I have a sort of attunement via Sonia's place. Here we are. <laughs> Thank you so much for creating the space on your channel to have this. Um, I apologize my for pleasure. the difficulties on mine. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. It is your space for the time that we are together, and I am glad to be sharing with you. <laughs> All right, so let's get this party started, huh? Let's do it. Where do we where do we even begin with these folks? Where are we gonna start? Where do we even begin? Oh, I think we should begin with where we began in our conversation. Like, yeah, I'm always interested in like how we, you know, like how did how did we even end up on this live together? Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, so I can start that. So um, okay. basically, I've been following you, Sonia, for a minute because um, my friend Matt McGregor is from Matt McGregor. McGregor. Yeah. yeah. I was like, McGregor. McGregor. <laughs> um, he, one day, you just made a post about just amazing, like, black femmes that are doing incredible work, and I followed all of them, and you were one of them. <laughs> and so I've just been t taking in your word for as long as I've been following you, and I just felt like the whole world should hear what you <laughs> what the, my whole world should hear what you have to say and what you have to give to us because I feel like I've told you on the phone that spirit really speaks through you to give messages mm. to the collective and, and healing, very healing messages um, from a place of like, I feel like you're my mom, but like not really, you know what I mean? Like, it's like when your mom talks to you that there's like a nurturingness to the, to the authority, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yay, I appreciate I that. So I wanted to just share that energy with, with my fans so they can hear you speak. Mm, I so appreciate that. I, um, I've been, I have been reflecting on my, um, controlling nature. I'm a Scorpio. Uh, <laughs> I understand. I'm a Scorpio moon. I understand. Yes, I've been so many Scorpio moons lately in my life as well. Um, and so, yeah, there's like an intense, there's a, there's the part of me that is like, no, I really do know what is best. <laughs> Then there's the part of me that's like, and free will, Sonia, and people get to live their lives in the West way that it, they choose to. And so it's been beautiful for me to reground whatever it is that I'm saying is like, I my assignment is to speak love in its most purest form. And that whoever is vibrating on that, that's who will show up in my sphere. That's who's supposed to be listening. Um, and if love isn't your if love isn't your vibration and you end up on my page, it's because your ancestors want it to be. So <laughs> so if you show up that way, like and so I'm working towards, and I feel like it's an ever evolving process to be grounded in love, that whatever it is that I do, that it be a manifestation of love. And that when I let it be a manifestation of love, I don't have to hold so tightly to trying to control it. And that's the I feel like that's my my work. Um, so obviously we are, you know, two souls vibrating on love, which is why we are together today. We have <laughs> yes. Yeah. And speaking of that, I feel like that's kind of exactly what the meditation the conversation I want today to be about is that being grounded in love through this process yeah. of, of the devolvement of the undoing of the unlearning, you know, yes. Um, I think one of the things that has been coming to me the most has been just 
I keep getting reminded by spirit and my ancestors that this is meant to be happening and that they are with me and that they're with mm -hmm. us and that they're fighting mm -hmm. on our side and that, that yes. they, they want to see this to fruition. They want to see the new world that we envision. They put that vision in all of our hearts, you know? Yes. Yes, yes, there yeah. is such a calling. I just got done crying, thanking my ancestors uh, right before I got on with you um, for the deep, clear guidance, right? Like, I, and I think part of it is I saw somebody on your thread when we were over on your page saying, like, how do you read energy, right? And one of the things that that brought to mind for me is that really what that is, is how do I hear and feel and know love. And however it is that I hear and feel and know love is how my ancestors are trying to guide me, is how I can discern energy. Like that is the answer every single time. And so the more that we tap into how is it that we feel, I mean, and I don't know if you've read the, the book, The Five Love Languages, but I think it's a useful tool because what it does is it gives you a chance to be like, oh, yeah, no, I hear it through the words of affirmation or I, I understand it through acts of service or time. And then once you have that framework, you can say, how do I give myself more of that? Because when I give myself more of that, what I'm actually doing is giving myself greater access to expanding my reception for love. That's it. And the more that we do that, the more we have the capacity to hear whatever our ancestors are trying to tell us, particularly in this moment where I, I deeply feel like they are saying, we've been here before. We know what this moment looks like. We've seen it. And we know where we went wrong and we know where we got it right. And we are trying to pass that down to you so that you all can do the same thing so that you don't make the same mistakes we made so that you actually get to freedom rather than to some facsimile of it. It's right. Some reform version of it. Right. Some, some, some sort of, you know, like some photocopy version. version of right. <laughs> Sideways. I always think of it as like the, I don't know, I'm going to date myself. When I was a kid, they made these horrible perfumes that were called designer imposters. And so if you, <laughs> like, if you love, <laughs> if you love Prada, you if you like Prada, you'll love Prada. And it'd be some whole sideways <laughs> Oh and I'm totally yeah. thinking just that's exactly where we are. It's like, don't, don't buy the Prada version of freedom. We can have the actual version. Oh my God. That is a word, an analogy, <laughs> an analogy of the century. Don't yeah, no, I, I like freedom that. When you can have Prada freedom. Right. Don't have Prada. <laughs> we can interrogate the capitalism in it later, but the whole There's point is. There's a little more is, layer into that, but we're, right, right. we'll get into that another time. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree one thousand percent. Like it all it, it just it, it it's that kind of thing that we're in right now is like I feel like we're in an age where we have tools that our ancestors didn't. Yes. Where we have tools of connection like this right now. Like the fact right. that you and I are able to get on a screen and talk to five thousand people around the world, you know? Right. That is a difference that is something that we have that that they did not have that gives us a power that they did not have um, and a voice individually that could be as impactful as like your voice right now listening you know you might not you might have like one or two followers you might have 10 followers you might have 100 followers whatever it is right you have what you feel is probably a small amount of people listening to you right but this day and age allows for your voice to be amplified within five seconds. You could go viral because you said some dope shit. You could go viral yeah. because you really connected with a point and, and expressed yourself in a way that everyone else can resonate with. And that can happen from any corner of the earth at this point, you know? So I feel like that, that in a sense, makes us all responsible in a Absolutely. way that we've never been before, you know? And I Absolutely. think that's what we're all feeling right now is that responsibility, that unprecedented responsibility that we weren't ready for, to be honest. A lot of us weren't ready for it, especially, and I'm speaking exclusively, of course, to white people and white passing people. Like, we weren't ready, probably, a lot of us, for, for life to smack us in the face and for us to finally 
understand and maybe for some, for some of us open up our eyes to a reality that's been here for black people yeah. and been yeah. here for indigenous people for a very long time, you know? So it's uh, in that uncomfortability, again, I, I want to go back to the other point that we were making is, is that rooting in love and growing out of that and into this new world that we want to create from this awakening. Because right now, I feel like, at least I'm feeling energetically, there's just a lot of like chaos, you know what yeah. I mean? A lack of, of uniformity, a lack of unity on the side of the non-oppressed. Uh, on the, I'm sorry, on the side of the oppressed versus the oppressor. Mm -hmm. The oppressors got it. They've been perfecting their game for 400 years. They know exactly what to say, how to say. They've been recycling the same goddamn words, to be honest. They don't even bother rewriting what they're saying. It's the they're same just, thing. They're just recycling their words. And so they have their, their ways of like making you feel like you've reached freedom. Oh, we passed another act that, that exactly. moved towards your freedom. Oh, you know, we, we, we put another politician in place that actually maybe didn't agree with you before, but now they do. Now they agree with you. Now they know. Right. The truth, now right? they're wearing kinky cloth. They're right. So <laughs> right now, now we ordered some kinky cloth from Amazon and everything is healed. <laughs> Mm, I don't know Democrats, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so oh. it's just one of those things where it's like we have to be mindful of that and 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 intentional with our energy and how yeah. and what we're aligning with and, and be open to being wrong because there's a lot of confusion. Rightfully so, there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of different things being tossed at us as what's real and where we should donate and what we should how we should streamline, you know what I mean? So, right. That in itself yeah. is a lot to take in. Absolutely. I think part of the, the work is, this is why it's so important in this particular moment in time, there is this real instinct to rush to action. This like, okay, I've been asleep. Let me wake up and do some shit. And what ends up happening is you wake up and then you do the wrong shit. You do you the things away. that have already been Right. The things that have already been done a thousand times, the things that have the people have been working on intentionally for decades and decades and decades. And so what actually needs to happen is first, there needs to be a pausing like I just woke up. I woke up and life has been happening around me while I was sleeping. And my first assignment is to fit, is to take the initiative to learn what was happening while I was sleeping. And to figure out also to figure out why I was sleeping, because if you don't figure out why you were sleeping, then you'll just go back to sleep again. This will all get overwhelming and you'll be like, never mind, I'm going back to sleep. And so when you when the question of like, why was I sleeping is what was I avoiding? What was I avoiding inside myself that I didn't want to deal with? What was I avoiding in my own history and family traumas and experiences? What am I avoiding in my ancestral history and family and traumas experience? What is it that I don't want to see? And let me fear facingly look at that. Then let me learn what it was that was missing, what was going on while I was sleeping. And then let me go to those people that were doing the things while I was sleeping and say, tap me in the game. I'm, I am here. <laughs> and let me elevate you, whatever it is. How can I be of service to you? And your how life? can I be of service to you? Right. And, and, but, and, but you can do that. You can say that. How can I be of service to you without being in people's DMS who already got 5,000 DMS from all the other sleeping folks, right? Asking, how can I be of service to you and just go to their website? Cause I bet you, they already put it on their website, how you could be of service to them. They already told you the time that the meeting has happened. They already told you the book that you should read. It is already in existence. That's your so assignment much. Honestly, so I have much. to give a shout out to Black Femmes right now because y'all have, first of all, already done the work. Y'all have been pushing for freedom since the very first time your children were taken from you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that, that's how long y'all have been in this, in this game of yeah. freedom, okay? So first of all, second of all, the way that y'all mobilize and, and create resources for people and create space for people, regardless mm -hmm. of the amount of emotional work that that takes, like, like all of the resources that I've been able to, to, 
to use and, 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 to, and to read from. All of, all of it's been compiled by Black femmes. Like, all of it has mm -hmm. been compiled by Black women who have, who have, again, already done this work and are like, yay, you guys are paying attention? Dope, here's my work. Like, here you yeah. go. Like, here's all of the shit I've been working on since I was, like, born and realized this was a problem. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, um, anyway, shout out to y'all for, like, the very real work that y'all are doing. And guys, there's an endless amount of black women who have written incredible shit for us to just get our shit together with. Right? For centuries, for centuries. For you centuries. go back to Sojourner Truth. <laughs> you can go back for centuries. That stuff has been happening. And the thing that I said, I said this on my page a couple of weeks ago, and I swear by it. And I was like, if you want to know the way to freedom, follow a black woman. And someone on my page said, you know, and I appreciate their sentiment. They were just like, Oh, black women have to lead everywhere. And now they got to get us to freedom too. I just feel like we're burdening them. And I was like, mm, be clear, my love. Black women aren't leading you. Black women are leading themselves to freedom. Black women and femmes are leading themselves to freedom. It just so happens that you would be foolish to see somebody headed towards freedom and not decide to go too. That's the work. <laughs> and so you don't feel like you're dumb if you're sleeping because you are dumb if you're sleeping. Right. I'm like, so I'm not leading you. I'm leading me, but I know I'm going. So go on ahead and get behind. You know. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a yeah. There's there's so much that our communities have been offering. Like you said, since the beginning of time, it's about how, and it's not just about like, how do we move through this moment politically? It's about how do, you know, Bell Hooks All About Love is not about how, necessarily about how we move through this moment politically. It's a message for about how we move through this moment internally that also happens to translate into the political. Audre Lord always understood that the personal was the political. Um, My bad. Uh, Hold on, give me one second. I think my AirPods keep switching in, so I think it's oh. messing the audio up a little okay. bit. Give me a sec. Okay. My bad. No. <laughs> oh, you're going to sing? You're going <laughs> to sing? <laughs> oh my gosh, that would make me so happy, Lauren. <laughs> but I keep talking to him, though. I'm just going to. Okay. Wait. So, yeah. I think, you know, what I want folks to know is that what I deeply believe the whole philosophy of my work. Um, which I realized I didn't tell anybody like what my work is or where I'm from. Y'all just talking to me. Uh, <laughs> oh, right, <yeah. laughs> I run a digital media and education company called The Body Is Not an Apology. Uh, and we are a digital media and education platform that explores um, the intersection of identity, uh, body, and I mean body in both the physical, mental, and spiritual sense of the word body, and social justice. And we do all of that work um, using a framework we call radical self-love. And radical self-love is about how do I move through the world intact with my, with an understanding and knowing of my inherent divinity? How do I know that I know that I know that I know that I am already enough? Because if I knew that I was already enough, then the systems of oppression that profit off of my belief that I'm not enough would not actually be able to exist anymore. They would be made completely invalid. And so the assignment is for us to tap back into our own experience of radical self-love so that we can divest from those external systems of oppression. And oh. that work, <laughs> that I work. Cry. I could really cry. I could really cry. <laughs> that's, that's, that's 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 that work is transformational. That work is personal, right? And that's why I, I say all the time, like, you, we're not going to change. The, you can't build externally what you haven't built internally. You're not going to make a world that is just and equitable and loving when you have an unjust, unequitable, unloving relationship with yourself. Oh it's not God. possible. That was my it's biggest, not possible. That was my biggest lesson, Sonia, in life. That was my biggest lesson in life was when... Because I, I wanted to change the world and fix the world since I was little. I've always had that mission in my heart. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like I'm part of the, of the growth, right? But as a mm -hmm. girl in the world, as any young woman in the world, um, it's different for all of us, of course, in the layers of what we have to experience and deal with. But that, that insecurity is embedded in us since we're born, that we are stuck into something, that, we, that, our, that yeah. our emotional availability is more valuable than, our, than ourselves. You know what I mean? Yes. That, yeah. that, that we have no value other than the way that we physically look. Um, exactly. That happened to me a lot, and that, that got thrown in my face too when I was 16 and, and entering this world of fame. 
you know, I, it was very clear to me that my worth was only based off of my looks and based off of mm -hmm. my value in comparison to the people around me. You exactly. know what I mean? And so that really fucked with my self esteem for a really long time. And that got in the way of my mission because I was so concerned about helping others and fixing others and fixing everything around me mm -hmm. that that ended up being a scapegoat for never looking at myself and all the ways exactly. that I had to heal and all of the pain that I hadn't looked at and all the pain that I hadn't accepted or reckoned with or even thought about confronting because I knew that I was very privileged. So to have pain for me was like, you don't have shit, bitch. What are you talking about? You know, there's right, so right. much going on in the world. But that's another thing is like, of course, all of our experiences are important, but they're nuanced and they're different. And, yeah. and, that, and pain is pain, no matter what it is, no matter what level we experience, no matter where it comes from or why it's there, it's there. And it, it affects our ability to love ourselves and it affects yes. our ability to be in communion with the collective and, and, and the oneness that we're surrounded by in this world yeah. and, and in the universe, you know? When you're disconnected from yourself, how the hell are you going to feel any sort of connection for anyone else? Of course you can't. Else. And right. that, I think, is also, when we talk about white supremacy, I think white supremacists are very far distanced from their humanity. They are so far away from their humanity. And, and that comes from their deep sense of self-hatred that came from Absolutely. somewhere along the way. Whether that was absolutely to them when they were little, or whether you know someone told them along the way, like that shit, that ideology doesn't just come out of nowhere. That shit is ingrained with violence. You know what I mean? Yes. And so we're all experiencing that, and that's what this. I think this moment that we're all in collectively is this breakdown of this violent structure, this breakdown, this reckoning of. And that's why my whole entire shit is like, I tell my fans all the time, and y'all know this, love yourself, accept yourself, figure out how the hell it is you're going to walk past the mirror and look at that person and be like, I'm inside of you, you're inside of me, and I love you. I love you so yeah. much. I love you so much. I respect you to not have to give you to anybody else and have them abuse you and you think that's okay. You know, exactly. Whether, no matter what level of abuse it is, just because someone isn't physically abusing you does not mean you're not. It doesn't mean you're not being abused. abused. Absolutely. Exactly. Psychological Absolutely. abuse is one of the most dangerous because you stay in a in a space of emotional and spiritual lack. You feel mm -hmm. like you're unworthy. That unworthiness is what drives you to self-destruct in whatever way that ends up manifesting, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So so absolutely. It is so important to unapologetically love yourself. And if you don't yet, it's okay, but you can work on it. And you so can absolutely work on it. So I wrote a whole book about it. <laughs> I did. I, and it's, you know, it's a perfect time because this week is also um, Blackout Publishing Week. And so it's a great time to oh, so buy a black good. person's book. <laughs> buy a black what? person's book. You can buy this black person's book. It's The Body Is Not an Apology, The Power of Radical Self-Love. Uh, and you can get it at any independent bookstore. You should preferably find an independent black bookstore if you can. Or certainly an independent bookstore run by people of color. Um, but... What to what you were saying, Lauren, that I think is so important for folks to remember and in the, the connection between white supremacy and and this deep, profound lack of love. My friend said this morning in my conversation, um, my uh, <laughs> my my pickled pineapple. We've officially named our relationship pickled pineapple. So my okay. friend Keisha <laughs> also known as my pickled pineapple, uh, uh -huh. and I were talking this morning and. Um, they said, you know, like white supremacy, I'm adding to it, but the, con the gist of the conversation was like white supremacist delusion and white guilt come from a deep and profound lack of love. And the fact that what black folks historically have done and do do is love despite, despite the level of rejection and violence that is off and that the rejection and violence is what happens when you can't love yourself and so you don't know what to do when you receive love basically white supremacy can't white supremacist delusion can't understand why we haven't killed them yet and so the entire Neither energy <laughs> right and the entire, 
But And it's because we are love. That's why we have it. It's because we are love. And so white supremacist this delusion will continue to try to provoke you to kill them because they are on, because they are on their own internal suicide mission because of their own sense of lack of love. Ooh, tell it again. And so, and, and I mean, and this is on a systemic level and it's on a personal level. If you do not tap into your own sense of love, you will spend your life trying to kill that which loves you. Or that which loves. That which, that which is love, period. Wherever it is, whatever it looks like, you can buy a plant and name it love. The shit will die. Because you, <laughs> it'll just, your energy's you, fucked up. Your energy is going to kill it. And so until you figure out how to reckon with that relationship of love inside yourself, you will be on a mission of annihilation of anything that looks like love, which is why white people have been out here trying to kill black and indigenous and people of color for all the time is because we look like love, operate like love, move like love in the face of a community and a history that can't figure out how to love itself. Oh, wow, I could cry. A sermon. <laughs> And this is always what I thought, by the way. I've always felt this way. I'm, all of my heroes, like, all of my heroes are black. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, all of the people who have done some shit in this world that is respectable and honorable and integritous, and, and I don't even know if that's a fucking word, but, like, yeah. that, has, that anything that is rooted in love, dead ass, has come from indigenous and black folks. Like, and when we say black folks, that's indigenous folks. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, like, Absolutely. It, it doesn't matter. Like we we say black, we say African American. We have so many different names to give them, but they are indigenous people of Africa. You know. Yeah, and absolutely. They, and that is the key to it all because indigenous way of life is in communion with oneness. It is in communion with, exactly with, with balance, source, with source, with harmony with each other. We indigenous people understand their their role in their relationship to the rest of 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 sentience of of, of yes. energy. You know, and that is the biggest difference in what we're seeing with these white supremacist oppressive regimes, like all of them across the board, because they're everywhere. Like, like they, like imperialism has been happening since a long time, like for a long mm -hmm. time. <laughs> all right, this has been the blueprint. This whole monarchy, this whole hierarchy of things, this whole like pyramid scheme of like one person at the top gets everything, and everybody else it's trickle down economics. This has been happening. Right. Since, yes. For for most of like functional humanity, especially since the industrial revolution, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. And since since it was possible to capitalize. But even before that, I'd say since manifest destiny. Exactly. So let's just right. And what what do you so, mean is manifest destiny? Can you, like, like it was when, when we talk Europeans about, woke up and was like, God said we should just kill everybody and own everything exactly. because because God hates. Wait, I'm about to put this together though. Because God hates us because of original sin. And so the only way that we can actually define, so the source of love hates us, which means that the only way it is that we could redeem ourselves is to amass and control the external world because our spiritual world, our spiritual doctrine tells us, births us into a story of not enoughness. So our entire life is about setting ships to sail so that we can figure out how to externally be enough because we are internally, permanently, through a totally made up doctrine, disconnected mm -hmm. from the love source, disconnected from God as love through this story of original sin, which means that now we have to set ships to sail and conquer everything because it's the only way that we can actually figure a way to define ourselves. If white people don't figure out how to reconcile themselves with love and reconcile, them, reconcile themselves with source and go back to that core trauma, to that core wound where somebody told you that God don't love you, if you don't fix that shit, whiteness will continue to do exactly what it's done throughout history until it kills us all. And themselves included. And everybody. The everybody. It'll take everybody out. It's like a black hole. It's like a it, black hole. Exactly. It's literally That's exactly. a black hole. So from, like, from the source. It. it just sucks everything into it and sucks everything out of existence like that's that's literally exactly. what, and that's the thing that's why it's so important again i'm going to reiterate first of all that was a word thank you very much <laughs> so
Second of all, um, I'm going to reiterate the importance of each one of you individually, because we we have been convinced and indoctrinated and programmed to believe that we're worthless, that we have yes. no worth, that unless we're making a fuck ton of money, that there's no value to our existence, unless we're profitable yeah. to a system, there's no way that we could have any sort of value and intrinsic value, right? That yeah. is, that is the, just how important it is for you to love yourself. That is just how, that's, that's, the most revolutionary shit you can do against this system is to break yourself free from it mentally. It is, because it is transformative. Second, yes, the second that you realize that this world that, that has been created is, first of all, made up of constructs, right? So a bunch of humans made it. A bunch right, of humans can up. unmake it in a second. And you know how, and here's some proof for it. How quick did we switch up for coronavirus? How quick did what? the whole world paradigm what? shift? For an invisible being. Right. Everybody told you you couldn't stop working. And then all of a sudden, everybody had to stop working. Everybody told you there was no way that you could, you know, like we need to fly every day all over the world. And then all of a sudden, there wasn't no planes to get on. Like all of it, all of it can, all of it is made up and all of it can be unmade. Switch at the drop of a dime. And the fact of the matter is, I believe the whole world shifted because old white men were in danger because of this virus. I think that's why the old whole world shifted to this quote unquote um, situation where, you know, you have the, the government giving billion dollar bailouts to corporations and no, and, and like having no consideration for the way that their population is gonna experience something. And that didn't happen all over the world, but that did happen in America. And Absolutely. so, so I feel like, again, it's, the most revolutionary shit you can do right now is educate yourself and free yourself mentally from the traps and the programming and the bullshit that we've been fed, school fed, like force fed since we were brought, brought into this planet and brought into this, this, this consciousness, this level, this era of consciousness. And that's what this really is. When we talk about, I mean, this is just what I believe, like really from my soul. When we talk about the book of Revelations or we talk about this apocalypse that's supposed to be happening or that's happening right now, I'm a firm believer that it's happening. I'm a firm believer that 2012 was the inception of the end of the world as we knew it. Mm -hmm. um, and it is the end of the world as we knew it. And totally. we can either choose to stay in the old paradigm, the lower consciousness, the lower frequencies, and get left behind, get taken out, truly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. taken out by the universe again i'm gonna say this again our ancestors and spirit are with this movement they are telling the, us the spiritual beings that are the most powerful in all these realms no matter what you believe no matter what denomination of of, of connection you have to source they are on our side because they're always going to side with love and we're invoking them they're, this is an era of spiritualists that has never been before because we've been educating each other and finding community online and finding each other in this in this world. There's no more illusions. There's no more space for illusions. Yeah. So so in that awakening, you must understand that your mind is the prize. Your mind is where the war is happening. Mm. Way way more than in physical life. In physical life, of course, there's a war on on black bodies, POC bodies, indigenous bodies. There's a physical war on those bodies for sure. Yes. And disabled people and LGBTQ, we can go on. They'll let everyone that's not a straight white person. Right. Everybody who's not a straight people body. Everybody who's like. not a straight people body, you're fucked, all right? So that, and in that case, though, we got to rewire how we think about ourselves, how we think about each other and our communities, and how we uplift each other and how we're going to get ourselves mentally out of the space of victimhood, mentally out of the space of we are a victim to white supremacy versus white supremacy is a construct that we can undo. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And that that in that undoing, the ass assignment number one is to undo white supremacy in you. Take the little it's, tyrant out of your body. Take the little it, tyrant it, in your head out. Because there is, you know, I describe it as like, in the book I talk about it as this analogy of speaking French, right? Like if you grew up in a household that spoke French, we'll use Spanish in this case since we have so many Spanish speakers on the uh, live. There you, go. you don't have to do anything to absorb the Spanish language except be around 
a world that speaks Spanish. Be with Spanish-speaking parents. Have your Spanish-speaking aunties and uncles come and talk over you. Put being put in front of a television that you know with p Spanish. Uh, speaking, speaking characters and before you know it you be by the time you are 10 months 11 months 12 months old you are starting to speak the language you've already been adopting it we speak white supremacy we've been watching it since they put it in front of our televisions they put it in front of our radios they put it in our parents minds and our parents mouths so of course we all speak it to one degree or another, we have all been taught all of the languages of oppression, whether it's mm -hmm. white supremacy or ableism or ageism or homo That's or transphobia, right. all That's of right. that phobia, we have been taught all of the lessons of oppression. We have been in an immersion school of oppression since we were children, which means that it, the question is not, I'm done asking people, you know, like answering people who are like, but I'm not racist. Shut up. Guess the fuck you are. <laughs> Everyone is. And if you start from, of course I am, <laughs> then the work becomes, so my assignment is to now figure out where so that I can remove that from me, so that I can practice a new language. But to say that you never spoke that is, is nonsensical. It's utter nonsense. And so stop making us have to do extra work from denying that you were in the same immersion school that we were all in. And let's actually get to the lesson of extracting it and learning a new lesson, a new language by starting from the fact of honoring that we all speak it and we all don't want to speak it anymore. And we can choicefully learn a new language. We have, we have the opportunity to do that. Amen. Amen. Give him a sermon. I was dancing because I love this song. I love this song. I love the song of the ending of white supremacy. Isn't it a great? <laughs> My favorite song. <laughs> oh, for real. Like, I'm just, I'm so ready, man. I'm so ready for all of y'all to understand your power. I'm so ready for all of us to transcend past this, like, toddler stage of, like, I don't understand what's going on. It's like, mm, baby, no, right. I'm no, about I and we gotta move. We gotta move. When, I, when you just said, "I'm so ready for us to all understand our power," like an entire like wave of goosebumps went across my. Like I just want, I just want these three thousand eight hundred and five people who are here right now to just sit with what might happen in the world if I truly understood my power. Mm. Just be with that question today. For the rest of your Sunday, That's what, it, might, on that. what is going to change in the world when I truly understand my power? I, woo, I can't wait. That's it. I can't wait. I can't wait to see that world. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I can't wait. Beautiful. I can't wait. Ah, thank mm -hmm. you so much, Sonia. Thank oh you. Goodness. What a Thanks beautiful for conversation. Over here. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was pretty successful, honestly. And if you can do me a favor, if you could save the live and send it to me. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that would be really amazing. And if I know that you know how to add caption to it, like the ad cap that you do for your videos. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I will have to possible to slap that on, do that. If it's too much, no, no worries. We'll see. I'll try to see if I can't get it to because uh, yeah, I'm gonna get my I'll get my admin to do it. Okay, cool. Amazing. Let me know. Um, yeah. Beautiful conversation. Thank you for bringing us over to your space. I'm so sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to figure this out because this is the second week in a row that I get interrupted. So Yeah, drop a word. Drop a word for Mark. He needs to get his shit together. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. He's already on the wrong <laughs> side. So We're going to get him together either way. Together. <laughs> All the way. Together. Next up. <laughs> All right, I love you, Mama. Sending you so I much you, positivity, protection, joy, love. Mwah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right back at you. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. <laughs>